the soul food topic on tonight is should we observe holy days in our captivity okay uh, we have been given the covenant by the most high that the children of israel might keep the sabbath days and the feast days but some might argue because we are in the land of our captivity because we do not have the tabernacle or the temple or the priests or levites that you know we're incapable of keeping the feast days um but let us go into the scripture and get understanding for the the answer is we are supposed to keep the feast days even in the land of our captivity so uh let's first go to the book of leviticus chapter 23 and i'm going to read a handful of scriptures in this chapter Leviticus chapter 23, and I'll start off with verses 1 through 4, and then 14, 21, and 31. So Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 through 4. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So, um... Moses speaks into the people and um, lets them know, preface what he says by saying, what I'm going to tell you are the feasts of the Most High. Okay. Verse three, six days shall work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. So you see the, the term holy convocation used in verse two and verse three. So you see in verse two, he said, these are my feasts. And then he goes on to describe the Sabbath day. So the Sabbath, the new moon Sabbath, these are feasts of Yahweh. okay? They are different than the holy day and the feast days, but they are still in that category. They are holy convocations. These are feasts unto the Most High. Verse 3 again. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh in all your dwellings. Mm -hmm. This was the command given concerning the feast of Yahweh. These holy convocations, the Sabbath, as well as all of the feasts shall be done in all your dwellings. What does that mean? Not only in the land of Israel, but wherever you may be scattered, wherever you may be dispersed in all of your dwellings, whether you live alone whether you live with your parents, whether you live with your wife and kids, whether you're in prison, wherever you may be in the land of your captivity, in all of your dwellings, these are to be kept. Verse four, these are the feasts of Yahweh, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Okay, so you have the overall feasts where Sabbaths, fall into that category and then you have the holy days feasts which fall within certain seasons of the year okay moving on to verse 14 of chapter 23 and ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn let me say it again and ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your God it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Now, this is concerning um, the Feast of first fruits, which is, I believe, the Sabbath of the day after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But you see that this was a command that should be done in all your generations, meaning from now until forever, wherever you may dwell upon the face of the earth. This is a perpetual Torah, a perpetual covenant, okay, and statute. Verse 21. And ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it that it may be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue forever in your dwellings through, throughout your generation. So the same thing being spoken, um, and I believe this was for, bear with me here. What is that? Is that Pentecost? So you have first a day of... Um, the Feast of First Fruits, and then 50 days later, you will have the Feast of Pentecost, okay? And the Most High is saying that these things ought to be done from generation to generation, meaning from year to year, from father to son, and teaching his children, and then in all of your dwellings, wherever you may be, whether you reside in the land or you are a stranger, okay? The stranger can be 
outside of Israel, but also the scriptures let us know that the stranger can be within Israel. And we are strangers. We have never known our land. We are in a strange land, mm -hmm. but we're still commanded according to the scriptures to keep it within their season, holy convocations from generation to generation in all of your dwellings. Don't we understand that the heavenly father foresaw us being in captivity? Mm -hmm. He foresaw our rebellion. He foresaw our disobedience and what he would plague us with and curse us to be shipped out on slave ships, cargo slave ships into strange nations being subjugated by, by nations of people. But he still would have for us to keep these commandments. Let me read also verse 31. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. So the same thing being reiterated concerning these different feasts. The Feast of First Fruit, Pentecost, and that last one, I believe, is the uh, yeah, Day of Atonement. Yes. Okay. From there, I'm going to move on to the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1, 12 through 14, 24 through 27, and 42. Exodus chapter 12, verses 1, 12 through 14, 24 through 27, and 42. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Okay, so we just read in Leviticus how the Most High spoke unto Moses to speak unto the children of Israel and say, These are the feasts that I would have for you, for the, my people to keep in all their dwellings from generation to generation, okay? So now we're going back to Exodus here in verse one. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. So they have not departed out of the land of Egypt. They're still in the land of Egypt, in the land of their captivity. These are great ancestors, okay? He's getting a commandment from the Most High to do uh, a particular act. Verse 12 through 14. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a, fe a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So the first Passover wasn't kept in Jerusalem. It wasn't kept in the land of Canaan. It was kept. It was initiated. It was set as a memorial still in the land of our captivity. There was no tabernacle. There were no uh, priests, you know, being able to perform their ministration, at least properly. They were still in the land of Egypt and the very first feast was implemented for the children of Israel to keep as a perpetual memorial uh, covenant and statute ordinance forever. Okay. Verses 24 through 27, the same chapter. And ye shall observe this thing for an, for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which Yahweh will give you. So they haven't gotten there yet, but you're going to keep it now until the time when you, you come into the land. Okay. 25 again. It shall come to pass when ye come into the land which Yahweh will give you according as he hath promised that ye shall keep this service. So you're going to continue to do it once you come into the land. Verse 26. And it shall come to pass. When your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? So a generation, because it said from generation to generation, there's going to come a generation that will not have, that had not been born when the deliverance of the children of Israel had taken place. They will be born years after. And when this season comes up for them in their childhood, they say, daddy, what are we doing? What is all of this? What's all the decorations? What's all, you know, what's all the festive? What are we doing? Okay, verse 27, that ye shall say it is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, in Egypt, mind you, 
So this thing was implemented still in the house of bondage, Egypt. When he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshiped. So this is what you're supposed to teach your children from generation to generation. Not only if they dwell in the land of Canaan, in the land of Israel, but even if they're elsewhere. Again, because it was first implemented when they were still in the land of Egypt. Okay. Uh, verse 42 of the same chapter. It is a night to be much observed unto Yahweh for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of Yahweh to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. For all of us to keep. All right. I'm going to link that up with Numbers chapter 9 verses 1 and 2. Numbers chapter 9 verses 1 and 2. And Yahweh spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. So when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and went into the wilderness, they, they, you know, they began Passover in the Feast of Unleavened Bread that night and, you know, kept the rest of the feast as they were exiting making their exodus out of the land it's showing here in numbers now we're entering into year two of the wilderness wandering so those same people that that saw the great miracles that participated in the very first passover and feast of unleavened bread are now in year two and the most high speaking to moses saying don't forget that season has come again it's year number two i want my people to keep the passover and feast of unleavened bread as i commanded them last year this wasn't just to be done for one year. You know, this is to be done year to year to year. So I, let me just give you a reminder, Moses, so that the people prepare themselves because you're supposed to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Dress, dress the lamb and prepare everything, prepare your sacrifice. So I'm reminding you so that you realize we're in that season. You need to get yourself in order so that the Passover may be kept as well as the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay. Again, being in the land of ca their captivity, year number two, they're in the wilderness. They're still not in the land. There still is, you know, no, uh, the, the, the tabernacle erected in Jerusalem. They're in the wilderness and they're still keeping the feast day. Okay. Um, Gail, I have you go to the book of Judith, chapter five, verses 10 through 12. Chapter five. Uh -huh. 10 through 12. Yeah. Judith chapter 5, 10 through 12. But when a famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there. So, Lachia, so this is the writer um, referencing what we just read in the book of Exodus about our great ancestors when they, well, first Jacob, when he followed Joseph and his household into Egypt. Those great patriarchs died. There was a Pharaoh that came about that knew not Joseph, oppressed our great ancestors. The Most High used Moses and Aaron to uh, bring forth a great deliverance and freed our people and went into the wilderness. Go on. But when a famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there while they were nourished and came there a great multitude. And became there. And became there a great multitude, so that one could not number their nation. Uh -huh. Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them and brought them low with laboring in brick and made them slaves. Salakia. Now, I know some may not uh, subscribe to the book of Yasha, but it goes into detail of how we were tricked as a people. We were okay. deceived. We became a great people, as it says here. That's even um, echoed in the book of Exodus. I believe it's the first chapter where Pharaoh saw that we were growing in great number. We went from 70 souls to in a few short centuries being an innumerable number. Number. Okay. There were probably more Israelites in Egypt than there were Egyptians. And Pharaoh didn't like that. That, that was a problem. Okay. Okay. Because he's thinking to himself, 
If they, you know, get in link with our enemies, then we're done for. Okay. But he, he deceitfully tricked the children of Israel and got them to be in bondage. Go on. Verse 12. Then they cried unto their king, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. Thank you. Um, from there, we're going to go to Ezra chapter 6. Ezra chapter 6. We're going to read verses 1 through 3, verse 7, verses 11 and 12, verse 16, and verses 21 and 22. Unless you want to. Okay. Just tell me the verses. Yeah, I don't get, you know, you know I'm going I'm to I'm I'm go, go on and do it myself. Okay. All right. Ezra chapter 6, verses 1 through 3 first. Then Darius the king made a decree, and search was made in the house of the rolls, where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. And it was found at Akmatha, in the palace that is in the province of the Medes, a roll, and therein was a record thus written. Verse 3, in the first year of Cyrus king, Cyrus the king, the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be builded, the place where they offered sacrifice, and let the foundations thereof be strongly laid, the height thereof three score cubits, and the breadth thereof three score cubits. So you see, as our people, the house of Judah, when they were brought into captivity into the land of Babylon, the king of Babylon, uh, uh, of the Persian king Cyrus, was had made a decree to free or allow the people, permit the, the, the children of Israel to go back into the land to build it up and to establish a temple. Okay, reading verse 7. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. Okay, verses 11 and 12. Also have made a decree that whosoever shall alter this word, let timber be pulled down from his house and being set up. Let him be hanged thereon and let this house, let his house be made a dunghill for this. Mm. And, and the God that hath caused his name to dwell there, destroy all kings and people that shall put to their hand to alter Put to their hand and to alter and to destroy this house of God, which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree. Let it be done with speed. So the word that was declared by Cyrus, Darius, he uh, he supported it. OK, he said, furthermore, if anybody tries to stop the Jews from building this temple, let them be hung. Let them be utterly destroyed. Let their God, let the God of the Israelite bring destruction on anybody who alters this word or tries to halt the children of Israel from doing this great work. Now, this is the, 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 the decree that went out by the mouths of heathens, but to expedite the great work of the Most High that the Jews, that the children of Israel might build the temple so they can keep these feasts more appropriately, but they were still keeping it in the land of their captivity. Because remember, this, the, word, the word said in uh, Leviticus chapter 23, let it be done from generation to generation in all thy dwellings. Okay, read verse 16 and then verses 21 and 22. 16, and the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of this house of God with joy. Mm -hmm. 21 through 22, and the children of Israel, which were come again out, come again out of captivity and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek Yahweh, uh, seek Yahweh of Israel did eat. 22, and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy, for Yahweh had made them joyful, and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Okay, so they made up in their mind that we're going to keep the feast. They did not live in Israel. They dwelt and lived in Babylon, but they were permitted to leave and to keep the feast, to build the house to build a place for them to sacrifice, okay? 
All right. I will have you read the book of Tobit, chapter 1, verses 10, 19, and then 2 and 1. Tobit, cha Tobit chapter 1. Mm -hmm. What verse? Again? Verse 10 and 19, and then chapter 2, verse 1. Tobit chapter 1, verse 10. And when we were carried away captives to Nineveh, which is in the empire of Babylon, go on. All my brethren and those that were of my kindred did eat of the bread of the Gentiles. Uh -huh. Verse 19. And when one of, the, one of the Ninevites went and complained of me to the king that I buried them and hid myself, understanding that I was sought for to be put to death, I withdrew myself for fear. So Tobit was a righteous man. Whenever he saw his brethren slain by the decrees of the king, he would bury them for it was a lawful thing to do. But the heathen, when they saw him doing that, they complained to the king that he might be punished for doing such a righteous deed because the king wanted to number all those that were dead. Okay, but Tobit was hiding them. Well, not really hiding them, but he couldn't number them because they were in the ground buried. Okay, and so he hid himself. All right, go on and read uh, okay. the next chapter, verse 1. Um, Tobit chapter 2, verse 1. Now when I was come home again. Salakia, meaning things had turned around for him. So now he was able to come out of hiding and come back to his home, which is in Nineveh, which is in the land of Babylon. Go on. Now when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me with my son Tobias in the feast of Pentecost, which is the holy feast of the seven weeks, there was a good dinner prepared me in the which I sat down to eat. So he kept the feast of Pentecost in the city of Nineveh, outside of Jerusalem, in the land of his captivity. Verse 10, and when we were carried away captives to Nineveh, all my brethren, those that were of my kindred, did eat of the bread of the Gentiles. Verse 11 says, but I kept myself from eating. So he didn't eat the profane foods of the Babylonians, of the Ninevites. But he dwelt and lived. He was a resident, a citizen of Nineveh. But when he came again with his wife and his son, they sat down and kept the feast of Pentecost. Why? Because the word said in Leviticus 23, from generation to generation in all thy dwellings, no matter where you at, even in the land of your captivity. Hallelujah. Okay. What other verse? That was it for there. I'll have you now go to 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verses 44 through 50. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verses 44 through 50. Okay. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 44 through 50. Okay. For the king hath sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. Uh-huh. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days. So, like you, so everything the Most High declared that we were reading in um, Exodus as well as Leviticus, the king, okay, is saying, nah, do away with that. Don't keep those. Keep my pagan holy days and holidays. Go on. Verse 46. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Mm -hmm. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. Mice and weasels and everything else perverse. Vultures and everything else. Go on. 48. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised uh -huh. and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. So... The king is saying, forsake the ways of your forefather, because this decree was not only to the children of Israel, even though it was purposed by the evil one to profane the children of Israel. But this decree went out to all the people. Whatever foreign, strange, traditional gods you kept, forsake that and keep my holy days. Keep my holidays. Keep at, even for tomorrow. For us, it's Thanksgiving, right? All right, Christians will say, we don't have to keep the feasts of God in the Bible. Jesus nailed that on the cross. We don't have to keep that, but they'll keep all of the white man's holidays. Why would we even want to keep Thanksgiving? 
It's a farce. What they teach us or are told, uh, taught us what Thanksgiving is, is a farce. Mm -hmm. We understand that they didn't come over and the Indians, you know, with, you know, they, they sat down and that's, that's a lie. But the Europeans, when they came over, they, they, uh, they deceived them, gave them smallpox and all manner of evil like that. And they destroyed them, committed mass genocide. Stole their land, sent them into slavery. Okay? The indigenous people of America. All right? Verse 49. Yep. To the end that, to the end they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. Mm -hmm. Verse 50. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. So there was a great consequence if you did not keep the king's commandment if they found you keeping any of your own policy you would be put to death okay you will be put to death right now we have if you will liberty i say that because of not being physically persecuted but we have a liberty to not have to keep these uh, these pagan ho uh, holidays We do have a freedom We do have a liberty To keep the, the feast of the most high God Here in the land of our captivity But the times may come Where You know there may be agents out And if they find you keeping The feast of the most high They may have you arrested or put to death Or whatever the case may be Okay it was for that that existed for our ancestors back in the day, and it may, it may very well happen to us. Okay. Last scripture, and we'll read Revelation chapter two, verses twenty-five through twenty-seven. Revelations chapter two, verses twenty-five through twenty-seven. So you know, people say, you know, we don't have to keep it. We don't have to keep it. You see our answers. You see the example. They were in the land of Egypt. They were in the land of Babylon, even had the persecution of the Grecian Empire during the time of the Maccabees, and they still kept it. If you read it, Mattathias and his sons and all that kept the commandment. They kept the Sabbath day. They kept the feast days, even with the persecution, even with the threat of the king saying, whoever does not keep the king's religion shall be destroyed. They said, I don't care. We're going to keep it. And even the officers that came to inform them of the king's decree, they, ki he, they killed them up too. We keep in these commandments. I don't care what's going on. We're going to keep these commandments. Revelations chapter 2, verses 25 through 27. These are the words of Yahweh Shai here in red. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. 26, that he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So you see here, Yahweh Shai speaking unto the assembly, speaking unto the churches. Verse 25 again, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. So you've already been keeping the commandments. You already been doing my will. Continue to do that. No matter what may happen, no matter how hard it gets, no matter if they threaten your life. Hold fast to it, okay? And then he expounds on it, verse 26. And he that overcometh, I, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. You overcome the persecution. You overcome, you know, these laws and these different policies put in place to keep us from obeying the Most High. When you overcome, you shall be given a reward. Verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father. So if you do my will and hold fast until the end and endure and overcome that you shall be given power to rule over the nation and to beat them with a rod of iron. You shall subjugate the nations, bring them into subjection and cause them to serve you. These things are prophesied in the Old Testament and Yahweh Shai and the New Testament is saying, keep these things. You've already done it. You already have the cloud of witness. You already have the commandment of Moses given to us in Leviticus from generation to generation and all thy dwellings continue to keep my works. 
Remember, Yahweh Shai kept the Feast of Tabernacle, peace, the, the Passover, Feast of Eleven Bread, and all of the feasts, including the Sabbath, because Leviticus says that the Sabbath falls into that category. He kept the Sabbath day. Keep my works. Over, if he that overcomes, I shall give him power over the nations. So to answer the question, yes, we should keep, or we are supposed to, not even we should, we're supposed to keep the, the feast days, Sabbath, even in the land of our captivity.